Here are some definitions that might be helpful. Space, the final frontier. So when I'm talking about space, I mean your space that you play in and space in relation to your floor plan of joy. Anchors. When I refer to anchors, I mean the things in your schedule that help anchor your time. For example, if you have children, picking them up from school is an anchor. It's a non-negotiable time that you schedule every day. If you have a weekly meeting, a, a class that you take, something like that is considered an anchor. One of the things I want you to look at as you're creating your schedule and as you're tracking your time is what happens when some sort of distraction shows up that wants to take you out of an anchor that you have set for yourself. So maybe it's a, a meeting that you have weekly with a writing partner. How often do you want to reschedule that? What sorts of things will intrude on that anchor that you have in your life? We want to make sure that, you know, Sometimes the anchors that we have scheduled with other people are easier for us to maintain than the ones we have scheduled for ourselves. So if we can schedule times in our trampoline that are anchors, that are commitments that we have to other people, it will help us to maintain that and build trust with ourselves that we're going to also show up for the times that we schedule for ourselves. Projects. Projects are things that require you to wear many hats. So I have a project of a TV show that I've been writing, for example. Within that project, I have to wear many hats. I'm going to be the actor in the thing, I'm writing the thing, I'm producing the thing. So a project is not a thing that we put into our time trampoline. A project is something that we keep on our wall or that we, um, that we keep on a list or make art out of or something as a goal, as a long-term thing we want to finish and complete but it doesn't go anywhere near our time trampoline. Our time trampoline is set up to support us in our categories. Our categories are the different hats that we wear. We can also think of our categories as our hyphens. So I'm a multi-hyphenate artist, I'm an actor, I'm a writer, I'm a photographer, I'm a mom, I'm a friend, I'm a lover, all these kinds of things. So each time I'm one of those things, I have to put a different hat on. That's what we're calling our categories. Containers. Containers are like projects, but they're a little larger. So when we get into looking at our projects, what we're going to consider is, are there projects where they could overlap? and I could build a container around a bunch of projects that could live together in the same space. I created the concept of containers for myself when I was trying to get my show Mother off the ground. Mother is a container that I created for myself. It's a TV show where I could make music and act and write and produce and wear all the different hats that I wanted to wear under one container. And I call it a container because it wasn't just a project. It was an album, it was a TV show, I was writing a Broadway musical, I was considering a feature. It's one container. A container can also be called a brand. It can also be called a company. It's the thing that has lots of different parts inside of it. And when we get into the next course, which is the Project Incubator, we will learn how to create containers that money can be poured into. To-dos. To-dos are separate from your projects and from your categories. So your to-dos are all the little minutia things that we worked out in that one exercise. And once you have your containers and your projects, which are over living in a place where you can feel good about not forgetting any of your babies and making sure that they have a place on the wall or in the bucket or in your dream jar or wherever, then you can sort out your to-dos under your categories. So they will help you when you look at your time trampoline and you see your category and you sit down and you're like, oh my God, what do I do now? You have your crazy to-do list that you made or your little pile of cards that you can go look at and say, oh, that's what I'm gonna do. When I say temples, I'm talking about creating protection around your creative time. There are some things, there are some categories that you have that you're going to need to protect from other categories. So when I say temple, I mean creating a temple, a physical space in your environment that is a temple for you to spend time in that specific category or just a, an idea of a space that exists on your time trampoline. 
Now it's time for me to go into the temple of being an actor, to go into the temple of music and just focus on that thing, knowing that I have the temples for the other things when it's time to spend time on those. One of the major benefits of the time trampoline for me was that I spent a lot of time worrying about money. Money was a big thing that interfered with my creative process. So I would sit down to create and I would think, man, how am I going to pay the rent? Or I would go to make dinner and be like, man, how am I going to pay the rent? So in my time trampoline, I have three hours set aside every week to focus on money. And at the beginning, when I was just working out my money practice, I would have an hour on Mondays and three hours on Fridays. Fridays need more time because I need to figure out how much money I can spend on the weekend. If you know what I mean? So knowing that I had time set aside for money eased the anxiety that I was feeling throughout the rest of the week and wouldn't allow me to use money as a point of interference when I sat down to create. It might not be money for you. It might be something else. But there's no question that knowing that that time exists on your schedule will help you ease into your creative practice.